Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here and welcome back to another Destiny video and another episode of A View From The Tower, the series that I'm producing in partnership with Game and Activision to not only talk about some of the awesome stuff Rise of Iron has to offer, but also to help those of you that are new and are setting foot in the Destiny universe for the first time. Last week we spoke about the upcoming Heroic Raid difficulty and what that meant for Wrath of the Machine, but this week, now that Heroic Mode is actually live, we're going to take a look at some of the loot that I got this week, and by extension that you can get too. Plus, we'll take a super quick look at what's changed and where you should look to be if you're planning on heading into the Heroic difficulty yourself. So if you do enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated and comment down below and let me know if you've done the Heroic Raid so far, and if so, what gear did you get? Now, let's talk loot. So far this week, I've completed two runs through the Heroic Difficulty Wrath of the Machine raid, and this is where I am currently at. I'm sitting at 390 light, which is 10 light away from the new cap of 400, and on the armor front, I've so far managed to snag the Spliced Gauntlets and the Cloak. Spliced being the term that refers to the gear that you get from the Heroic Difficulty and not the normal difficulty. And aside from the parts being predominantly black, the main difference comes in the fact that the spliced gear has ornament slots. Now we can't get the ornaments yet, they come from challenge mode, and that's a topic for another time, but when we do get them, it will allow us to make the gear glow, which actually looks pretty sweet. Also, if you guys have the raid gauntlets and you're not using them, then I highly recommend you reconsider. The raid gauntlets are probably the most useful armor piece you can get. When upgraded, they result in more frequent heavy ammo drops when you kill Fallen, and seeing as killing Fallen is all you do in the raid, and heavy weapons will be some of your main damage dealers, it's a bit of a no-brainer really. And as for the weapons, I managed to snag myself the Pulse Rifle, Sniper Rifle, Sidearm, and Machine Gun. The Pulse Rifle, Steel Medulla, has just become my new favourite primary weapon to use in the raid. It's part of the Hacker Weapon Foundry, and while in some cases that might not mean much, in the case of Pulse Rifles, it means that it's a 4 round burst as opposed to the conventional 3 round burst Pulse Rifle. It's also possible to completely max out the stability on this weapon with the right perks, so it's definitely a great weapon to use in hectic encounters. As for the Sniper, Ex Machina, this is also now my secondary weapon of choice, again, for use in the raid. It has marginally more impact than the Event Horizon and Devil's Dawn Sniper Rifles, which are two of the top choices for the raid right now. Plus, it also has the perk Wait For It, so after you reload, you get a 4 round magazine as opposed to the conventional 3, which naturally helps during those DPS phases on the bosses. After that, I got the Sidearm, Zeal Vector. Truth be told, I haven't used this too much, but it does have a really good rate of fire, plus it has reactive reload and quick reaction, meaning that if you reload after a kill, you not only get a damage bonus for a short period of time, but you also get increased agility thanks to the quick reaction perk, which will certainly have its uses during most of the boss encounters. And then finally, I got the Machine Gun, If Materia. This has a similar set of perks to the Scout Rifle, in that it returns rounds to the magazine upon rapid precision hits, plus when you trigger that perk, it can also transfer rounds from your reserves. So this basically allows for longer firing periods during damage phases on bosses, provided of course you're hitting those precision shots. Also, as a passing note, there's a fancy new Ghost Shell too, this time embracing the Seaver colour scheme. And while before I wasn't really sure whether there would be anything to top the normal mode Ghost Shell, which I really like, this one does look pretty cool. So, that is basically all I have so far. Any duplicate items I got, I infused to push my light up, but that is my loot from this week's raiding. And now that we've covered that, for those of you that perhaps have yet to dive into the heroic difficulty, let me quickly go over the things you need to know. The heroic difficulty recommends that you be at least 380 light, but if I'm completely honest, while you'll be fine at 380 for the first part of the raid, the main thing you're going to have difficulty with throughout is clearing large numbers of aggressive adds in between various damage phases or mechanics phases. And while yes, you'll be able to take them down at 380, the further you progress, the harder you're going to find it. So honestly, 385 light would probably be a more appropriate starting point, plus the loot that you earn as you go will also have a chance of pushing you up even further. And to recap something we touched on last week, two of the best heavy weapon choices for the raid are most definitely either the Sleeper Simulant, which is a heavy fusion rifle capable of landing a critical shot, and one of the highest damage ranged heavy weapons that you can use for this raid. However, if you have the exotic sword, Dark Drinker, that has amazing utility on the final boss and can actually output more damage than the Sleeper Simulant. Our team had three Dark Drinkers and three Sleepers, and we were able to take out the final boss in two rotations. True, your gear and your light is a heavily contributing factor, but regardless, if you have either of those weapons, you cannot go wrong. 
As for the actual encounters themselves, well I put together a detailed hard mode boss guide on the channel earlier this week, so I'm going to link that down below for you guys to check it out. But if you're just looking for a quick checklist to work out what's new, then here it is. The first boss, Volsic, will see additional SIVA charges introduced during the bomb phase, 6 now as opposed to the previous 3. The safe rooms have now had shutters added to them so that you now have to slide under the doors as opposed to simply walking in. And the monitors that you have to shoot to interrupt his one hit kill move, the SIVA density, are now bigger but have much more health. As for the siege engine, it's a bit faster during the first phase but then the only other change is near the end, as you carry the parts towards the siege engine, you will have to deal with the perfected devil walker. Then as for the final boss, Axis, during his first phase, there are now three turrets that you'll need to shoot in order to deactivate them to stop them killing you, and they'll reactivate every 20 seconds, so you're going to need to keep an eye on them during the usual rotations. And as for the final phase, you're going to have more servitors to shoot in order to grab bombs from. In normal mode, it's three servitors per rotation, but in Heroic, it is 9. So in that respect, it's kind of like round 3 Axis Phase 1, just all the time. And that is a super concise list of changes. As mentioned, the full guide, link down below, explains them all in detail and how they affect the fight. So definitely check that out if you want to know more. But for the time being, that, my friends, is pretty much it. That's a look at the loot that I got in the Hard Mode Raid this week, and a quick summary of some of the changes and where you ideally want to be before heading in. As always, hopefully you guys find this helpful. Of course, you can check out the channel for more Rise of Iron videos, and if you want to know more about Destiny, then you can check out Games Hub, link down below. But until next time, thank you for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.